In today's video, we're going to be having a look at a brand new way of setting up and controlling your NS panel using the NS Panel Manager. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. The NS Panel Manager is a brand new project that's in the works and currently it's in a very early alpha state. The project's designed to allow you to control and manage the deployment of multiple NS panels across your home network and this project really is jammed full of features and I'm talking things like full local control, a complete web UI for managing, deploying, updating and literally anything you can think of with a panel, the web UI can pretty much do. And as well as that, we've got things like MQTT and just so much more. If you're an NS panel user and you've got multiple panels and you've wanted that one way of being able to just manage and control them all, then this project is that thing. As I mentioned, this project is very early on in alpha and it's been designed and developed by Eric and Tim. Eric's been designing and developing the UI for the panel over the last couple of years and he's even got his own YouTube channel where he runs through all of the different designs and all of the things that have made the UI become what it is today. And Tim, Tim's been around in the background doing all of the code and writing all of the things that's actually made this project possible. I was given access to a very early build of the project and after using it for just a couple of days, I can safely say that this is going to be the method that I adopt and the way that I'm actually going to use all of my panels across my house. Out of all of the different projects that I've tested out and tried, this one is by far the best thought out and it just works the best. With this project, you've essentially got three different parts. You've got your MQTT broker, which can be hosted as part of your smart home. You've then got an add-on or a Docker container that runs the host, which is the actual NS Panel Manager itself. You've then got the TFT, the, the GUI, the firmware, and all of the bits that you actually put on the panel. And those three things come together to give you this NS Panel project, NS Panel Manager project. Project actually isn't even part of the title, it's just NS Panel Manager. There's a couple of things that I really like about this project. First of all, I like the way it's been developed. It's been developed in a very open way, so it's not tied to just one set smart home. At the time of recording this, it currently supports both Home Assistant and Open Hub, and you can set up and connect to either of those two things by just making use of an authorization token. And because it's not locked to just these set two things, if you really wanted to, you could set it up and connect it to other platforms and other services. The next thing that I really like is the web UI. This project has a web UI that allows you to do pretty much everything, anything you could want to do, it's in a web UI. You might be sat there thinking, well, why is a web UI important? Why would you want that? Why would I want that? Well, the reason that I want this and the reason that it is good and it is cool is the fact that with this web UI, you can control and manage multiple panels all at the same time. And you can do things like, upload new TFT files, you can upload the new software, you can upload the firmware and you only ever have to flash the panel once and you might be thinking well if I flash it with ESP Home or Tasmota and use some of the other projects I can also do those things. Well yes you can but you can't do it this easy. With some of those other methods where you're using ESP Home or Tasmota you're kind of dependent and tied to that particular software or that update so with ESP Home for example Every time Home Assistant and ESP Home update, you're going to be prompted to actually update your panel, which can break things and can make things not work with some of the different things that I've tested out recently, which can be very annoying. And if you think about doing this across multiple panels, it gets really annoying really fast. That's probably enough of me telling you how much I like the project or what I think is good about it. So let's walk through the project and you can decide for yourself whether you think it's something that's good and something you're going to be checking out yourselves. The first thing you'll need to do is to set up the Panel Manager web UI. And conveniently, this is all nicely packaged inside of a Docker container. So it's just a case of bringing the Docker container up and then you're pretty much good to go with using that web UI. At the time of recording this, this is only available in that set Docker container and it's not on the Docker registry just yet. But in the future, I know that Tim's going to be investigating how to set this up as a Home Assistant add-on. So potentially in the future, this for Home Assistant OS users can just be a simple one-click install and then you've got this all done for you. But until then, it's Docker only. 
With that Docker container up and running, you'll be able to access the web UI by visiting the container's IP address, followed by port 8000. And if you do visit that page, you'll be greeted with just a blank NS Panel Manager screen, which doesn't have any panels in. So let's get some panels in there now. To get a panel into the NS Panel Manager, the process just involves you taking the panel apart, flashing it with the provided NS Panel Manager firmware, and then just running through a couple of steps. The first step will involve you connecting to the panel's access point, then filling in your Wi-Fi credentials for that panel, and then pointing the panel at the address of the manager. With all of those details entered, you can then just safely reboot the panel, and it should automatically just appear within the panel manager. If you're using a brand new NS panel, or one that's previously been used with something else, then you'll notice that the display is either still the stock Sonoff one, or it's whatever you were previously using before the flash, the reason for this is because that TFT display hasn't updated and to fix this it's just a simple case of clicking that GUI update button and then just waiting a few minutes for it to actually update the screen. Once that update completes you'll be presented with a brand new UI that's part of the NS Panel Manager. So that's a quick run through of actually setting up the manager and actually getting a panel into the manager. Now that we've got that let's actually have a look at the UI and how everything works and what actually makes this project cool. Let's start with the web UI. So this page we're on now, this is the main page and this will be the page that we land on whenever we connect to our NS Panel Manager. From here we can see a list of any panels that we currently have connected and in this demo we can see that I've just got the one. For this panel I can see its name, the room it's in, the IP address, the status, its signal level, any memory usage and version numbers that it has and I've also got access to four quick actions. With these actions I've got the option to reboot the panel, I can update its firmware, I can update its GUI and I can also delete the panel. Along the top of the page we've got a small menu bar that consists of just four different items. The first one is NS Panels which is the page that we're currently on. We've then got Rooms which allows us to add more rooms, we can change the order of rooms and we can also display a list of any rooms that we've added. Next up is Upload and this one's kind of self-explanatory. But from here we've got options for uploading firmware, data files and also TFT files. Any of these files that we add can all be accessed by any of the panels that we choose to upload them to. So we upload a TFT file and then when we press that GUI button to do the update it will just load it from whatever we've uploaded. The final top menu item then is settings and inside of here believe it or not you'll find settings. But these settings Tim's been referring to as kind of global settings. So these can be applied to all of your NS panels by just making little changes here. Just below those global settings, we've got options for MQTT. So we can set up our MQTT server. We can tell the panel manager where our broker is, and then we can connect to that broker to send messages and also receive messages. So in my case here, I've just set this to the broker that's running on my home assistant. If we carry on down the page a little bit, We'll find the options then for the Home Assistant API and also for the Open Hub API. And with both of these, it's just a case of generating a token and then storing that access token in this list here. If we jump back then to the main panel view, we can select our panel name, which will open up individual settings for our selected panel. In here, we can choose which room the panel's in. So in my case here, this one's just going to be my office. But we've also got a couple of options for things like changing the working mode for the buttons. With the panel manager you've got two different options for the buttons. You've got the first mode which is the default one which is direct mode. In direct mode whenever you press any of those buttons it's going to trigger whichever relay it's connected to. The second mode then is detached mode and in detached mode no matter which button you press it won't trigger any of those relays and the only way that you can trigger the relays is either programmatically or by switching it back to direct mode. If you happen to have lights set up at the point that when you actually set up detached mode, it will actually give you an option to set one of the lights that you want detached mode to control. So detached mode can just control something else other than the relay. Just below those button settings, there's a button to save any changes that you may have made. There's another reboot button. And if we carry on just a little bit further down, there's an option to view any logs. Now with these logs when you first set up the panel you'll be asked what kind of login you want to have with the panel and I don't have any turned on so I don't have any logs here but if you did turn on any of those logs you'd see it in this part here. And again now if we just head back to the main NS panel screen but this time we choose the room it will jump us straight into the room settings. 
Inside of here, we can set a name for whichever room we selected. So this one's currently just set to Mark's office as the friendly name. We've then got the option to add scenes. So within the NS Panel Manager, you can actually create scenes based on the lights and any other settings that the lights may have. So whether it's brightness, color temperature, or even just color. You then got the option for adding lights and this is actually really cool. It doesn't matter where the light is, whether it's in Home Assistant or Open Hub, you can either filter it by any of these settings or you can view all of them. In my case, I've only got Home Assistant, so if I select this, I can see all of the lights that are currently connected to my Home Assistant and I can choose to add that light to this room. When you select the light in your list, you'll be asked what type the light is. So there's two different types currently that you can set the light to. So it could be a ceiling light or it could be a table light. The next options that you have then are the control mode. So you can set whether the light has a dimming function or whether it's just a switch. And the final options that you have are to specify if it supports color temperature and RGB. Once you're happy with your selection, you can go ahead and press add and then you'll see that populate within your list. But what's nice about this is if you just scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the individual light control, which is kind of like a black square. And in here, you'll see a list of all the items. And I think the plan is for in the future, you'll be able to actually use this to customize this. So you kind of get like a live preview of what's going on and what the panel's UI is gonna look like. With this being just in its early state, the only things that you can actually set up and use at the moment are lights, but there are plans to add covers and all of the other devices that you can control within your smart homes. And that will also get the UI that kind of supports it too. If we move then over to the panel, let's quickly run through the panel's UI and then we'll wrap this up. By default, the panel will go to sleep after a few seconds of not being interacted with. And to wake it up, you just simply need to tap on the screen. In the top left of the panel's UI, you'll see a little house icon, and if you select this, this will take you into the scenes. If you've made any scenes for that set room, you'll see them in this list here, or if you wanted to cycle to another room and select the scenes that are in another room, you could select those and those will trigger for whichever room you choose. Selecting the arrow in the top left corner will take you back to the main screen, or if you just leave the panel for a few seconds, it will dim and then it will turn off, and when you wake the panel back up, it will automatically be on the default starting page. On the center of the panel's UI, you'll see four different icons. You've got the ceiling light, the table light, the brightness, and then also the color temperature. With the brightness and the color temperature, you've got little sliders that you can adjust up and down to either adjust the brightness or the color temperature. And if you happen to have color, you could also adjust this here too. Along the bottom of the panel, you'll see the room that's currently set and you'll also see which lights are currently being targeted. So here I can see that it's currently in Mark's office and I can see that it's targeting just the room lights. If I was to tap room lights, it would drop me down to all lights and from here I could use the panel to control all of the lights in the house. Selecting the room itself will take you into a list of all of the lights that are currently available in that room. So you can either toggle them on or off, or if you select one of the individual items, it will drill down further, which will allow you to control the brightness, the color temperature, and also color for that particular light. Tim's done a great job with this firmware and the sliders and clicking around on the screen and changing pages and all of that stuff is just so much more snappier than what it is with the default zone off firmware or any of the other custom projects that I've tried out. By default with the panel, the ceiling lights and table lights kind of act as groups. So any light that you have in any of those groups will all be adjusted whenever you change the values for the brightness or the color temperature. On the main screen of the panel, if you adjust the color temperature, it will actually adjust it for both the ceiling lights and table lights. But if you wanted to adjust it for just one set group, you could press and hold on whichever one it is, and that will lock it to just say the table lights or lock it to just the ceiling lights. If you click on it again, it will return back to the default state. If you wanted to only adjust one light, you'd need to click the room and then select whichever light you wanted, and then you could adjust it like that. At the moment, this project's currently private, so there's no way for you to actually get your hands on it and start testing it out. But towards the end of summer, it is gonna release and be open to the public, so you can start downloading it and contributing to it and just helping to improve it in general. Eric and Tim are also going to be releasing a Kickstarter for this project just to help get some more funds to cover the development time and also to help them buy new NS panels to do more development work on and just test things in a much larger scale. Now, you don't need to be a Kickstarter backer to get access to the source code or anything like that. 
Again, that's going to be available to everybody and it's all going to be open source, but any contributions you make are just going to go towards the development time and helping to improve this in general. The main takeaway and what I've been trying to show throughout the video is that you end up with a very simplistic UI that can control the lights in a set room or across your whole house and the actual configuration and all of the setup and everything you need to do to actually get those lights or in the future devices onto the panel is all done through a nice web UI. And there we go guys, that's been a very quick overview of the NS Panel Manager. Let me know what your thoughts are on this project in the comments below. If you're after any more details or information about this project, then you'll find all of those in the description below. And while you're down there checking those out, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you find links to all of those things in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.